Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Today is going to be my 2022 year in review video. I do one of these every year. I've done it since I've started the channel. This is the time I like to talk about my favorite pieces of gear of the year, my least favorite pieces of gear, and maybe stuff I think I should add because things have changed since I did the review, or maybe there's a piece of information you guys requested. So the first one is going to be my KYG limited edition Kiesel Delos in copper penny metallic and it kind of copied what I would consider the old penny. When it was new, it had an orange-like copper look to it, where new pennies are like a pink copper. It's right behind me, right there. That guitar was one of the first limited edition KYG products that we did. The idea is simple. Can you talk to a company that we work with and say, hey, can we do something unique just for the viewers? The idea is to give you something cool and exotic, but either for the same price as it normally sells for or less. So no, no added like, hey, now it's a custom charge and you get kind of a custom instru instrument. And what's great about that is like in a lot of these products, you can still buy a Delos, obviously from Kiesel. You can get all the specifications. If you tell them it's the Phil McKnight or the KYG spec guitar, uh, anyone there can pull up the specs and, and duplicate the guitar to this day. The cool part, what's the cool part? I absolutely love this guitar. Uh, to say it's my favorite guitar is probably too much, but to say that it's my main guitar that I play, Absolutely, this my S and my SG that you guys see all the time, my Burst SG, those two guitars are my daily players. The next video I did is called Why I Use My Kemper. And so obviously on YouTube, I review amps and, and pedals and, and guitars and I go through guitars with you guys. And, but when I'm not making YouTube, I play a Kemper. And so obviously that was over a year ago. I still not only play the Kemper, but the Kemper still has the original three, four presets that I've had when I did that video. For me, it's just a powered Kemper into a 112 cabinet. I plug into it. If I'm gonna play this afternoon for my personal time, that's what I use and that's what I like about it. But doing YouTube content, I want to use a lot of real amps uh, for a ton of reasons. And so that's what I use for doing the reviews. But when I'm not doing reviews, I, I use a Kemper. <laughs> so that's my main thing. Then I did a, a video about the Valiant offset, the Jupiter offset, it's right there. And that's a guitar that's made in Ukraine. And little do we know that obviously the war in Ukraine was about to start just right after that video uh, about a month later. And um, fantastic guitar, fantastic builders. Uh, you know, we're still supporting them in every way we can. And uh, we have more to talk about in this uh, video today too about them, but uh, great guitar. Uh, then we did the PRS Silver Sky SE, and that was sent to me by PRS as a preview guitar. In other words, it was sent to me before they even released them. So I took that opportunity to not only do a review of it, but also compare it to the USA Silver Sky. It really kind of made me realize that I really wish <laughs> PRS would make just a, 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 a Strat Silver Sky type guitar with uh, PRS specs, like a 10 inch radius fretboard you know, uh, the actual PRS bridge. Kind of what they did when they did the Paul Reed Smith DC3 and NF3. Although that guitar didn't do well at that time, I think now that would be a great guitar to bring back or a newer, more updated version of that guitar. Where I ended with this was, I ended up buying a custom shop Fender guitar that has a 10 inch radius fretboard like a Paul Reed Smith. It's specced out more like to my liking. So I think the Silver Sky is a great guitar, but kind of helped me understand what I was really looking for. Then I reviewed a Gibson Custom Shop RO. Not a great experience. Uh, it, uh, the, uh, guitar had issues and I decided that the guitar just had too many issues and so I sent the guitar back to the store. Then I did the Dean Zielinski Z Glide guitar neck guitar. Uh, that's a Dean Zielinski with a Z Glide neck. Uh, that was a guitar that I had really messed up. <laughs> I had uh, a, 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 a Zielinski guitars reached out, said they'd like to send some guitars or a guitar or wanted to work with the channel. I didn't think I just blurted out on the next podcast, like, hey, they reached out, we're gonna do a video. And everybody was excited. And everybody was like, I'm really interested in your take on the Z-Glide. And then nothing transpired from those communications. In fact, I kind of stopped hearing from them and they stopped responding. So I bought the guitar and I did the review. You guys really liked it, got 135,000 views. And uh, I'm glad I did it, but that's basically what happened was, uh, you know, you guys really wanted the video. I felt like I shouldn't have said, I, I was talking to that company without a real deal in place. And um, so the good news is you guys liked the video and Zelensky uh, sent a message, uh, the brand sent a message after I did the video that they liked the video, obviously, because, you know, 135,000 views on their product was probably 
very nice for them. Then I did the 304 stainless steel fretboard guitar. Now that's one of those guitars, like I don't know how to explain, but you have a company like 304 stainless, they're in Canada. They reach out to me and say, hey, can we send you some guitars? They sent me two guitars. I went through them, did a deep dive and very unique, very weird, very out there, very cool. And of course they were loners and they, ha they had to go back. And um, that was it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of those videos are those are opportunistic. In other words, like, you know, when, when are you going to be able to put your hands on a guitar with a stainless steel fretboard? And let's go ahead and make that video because to me, it's uh, it breaks the mundane up for me. Um, it's not even about the channel and how the channel does. It's for me, it's like, I just can't, I can't have the same thing over and over again. I, I you know, you want to, you want to feel, I want to feel like I'm excited about making a video sometimes. And that was a video that was excited because I was like, I have no idea what to expect and what to do. The next video I did was the Kramer Focus, the VT211S. A viewer sent that guitar. They bought it at Sweetwater and had it shipped to me. I don't know who the viewer is and I don't know why. It was under a gift receipt. It just showed up. So I figured, well, I should review it. Possibly one of the worst guitars I've ever reviewed on the channel in the way it felt. If you watch that video, you'll see at some point I stop mid video. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done. Uh, my hand's pretty chewed. Uh, it doesn't hurt. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I can just literally feel all my skin coming off my hand over time. The hurdle of this guitar is that the frets have sprouted. You have that one dead spot. I was halfway playing through the guitar. My hands were just getting shredded by the frets. And I thought, I'm not going to be able to play the next guitar. And I go, that th this is stop. Um, so it was an affordable guitar. It looked cool, man. The color was cool. It's, it had a lot going on. And a lot of people put comments that theirs came and there was fantastic. So, you know, but I can only unfortunately tell you what I have in my hands that day. So, like I said, if I have a great one, that doesn't mean they're all great. And if I have a bad one, it doesn't mean they're all bad. Right now is a perfect time to talk about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. After taking that test, I really saw some areas I could really improve on. Not only was I able to take a class on lighting, I was able to take a class on recording. And one of the things I really enjoyed is that they have the classes set by time. If you have 15 minutes to spare, that was a big deal for me because sometimes I was thinking when I was sitting around going, I got 15 minutes, let's learn something real quick. One of the instructors I really enjoyed was Chris Brooker, and I really like how he broke things down. But more importantly, I like that I could go to sections as I was setting up some new recording ideas. The first 1,000 people to use the link down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Then I did the eArt guitars. Now, when I did the videos for eArt, I didn't know it was called eArt. I didn't talk to anybody at the company. They sent an email, can we send you a guitar? I read it as ERT, E-A-R-T, but it's pronounced apparently eArt. That guitar blew me away. Uh, that video did really good. It was one of the best performing videos of the year. I can understand why, because the frets were done great. The guitar is great. My only thing I would note now is one thing, and it has nothing to do with eArt particularly, but all the companies like eArt that reach out to the channel um, that sell guitars on Amazon or on their websites and their new brands. I see this trend. They're either a, they know the video is going to come out and they raise a price. That's not what ER did. So, um, but it always feels like 30 days, 60 days after I make the video or a bunch of YouTubers make the video, the prices just go up and it's not uh, something I, I want to be part of. And one of the things about that, that really stinks is not only did the prices go up after you make the video, but then after the video dies off, it seems like the prices not only go down, but sometimes cheaper than they were when you started. Uh, so the prices fluctuate is what I'm trying to say. So when you're dealing with off-brand guitars, I'll try to make disclosures going uh, disclosures and videos going on from now on saying, hey, look, one of the downfalls of dealing with new brands is their pricing is not as firm as established brands and it can go up and down. So be be an educated consumer. Then I did the Yamaha Revstar detailed uh, deep dive review. I have to say that guitar is truly unique. My favorite thing about that video was I, I couldn't figure out some things in that guitar were doing. I came up with some ideas. I reached out to Yamaha. They couldn't confirm it. The engineer was not available to confirm my ideas. And after so many like weeks, I think it was weeks of having the video done, I was like, okay, I'm just going to have to put out the video and hope, you know, hope for the best. I put out the video and um, right after I put out the video, uh, Yamaha had emailed me after the video saying, hey, they enjoyed the video and the engineer looked at it and all my thoughts on what they were doing were absolutely correct. So whatever you're watching that video, it's 100% correct. There's people in the video that are in the comments that say, thank you for this. And some say that I'm wrong. Uh, here's the answer. The engineer who designed all that, including that transform, which is built by Yamaha for that guitar, said that what I said is the correct way it works. I did the uh, Taurus Servo pedal. That was probably one of my favorite pedals of all time. I would definitely put that up there as top five pedals of all time. 
uh, which is a boost pedal that also is like a compressor, sustainer, enhancer, all in one with one knob. Fantastic pedal for $149 made in Poland. I stand by that pedal all day long. I have two of them. I love them. Then I did the limited edition 1959 Epiphone Les Paul. Fantastic guitar. Blew me away. I really anticipated that guitar coming and just feeling like a repackaged, uh, you know, $500 Epiphone and maybe just, you know, just some, you know, BS <laughs> excuses why it's almost a thousand dollars. And no, I was really, really impressed. I have a Gibson R9. I will tell you right now, I would not sell my Gibson R9 and buy this guitar. Um, because financially it doesn't make sense. I would lose money on my R9 and why do that? I, but if I was in a store and I picked up the R9 in this, I don't know if I could then justify the six times the price for the Gibson R9. Uh, and in my case, it was like five times the price, but five times the price. If I was seeing a store, I don't know if I would come up with that answer. I don't know if I would actually pick the, the, the Gibson R9 for five times the price. I just don't know. I don't know. I did the Kloss Apollo uh, carbon fiber neck guitar. They sent two of those on loan, a uh, 24 and three quarter scale that was white and a 25 and a half inch scale that was blue and uh, loved them so much. I ordered a 25, uh, 24 and three quarter scale in blue. In other words, so the guitar I have now is a hybrid of those two guitars. So if you watch that video with those two guitars, uh, if you see one uh, in the background, sometimes the blue one, it's not from that video. It's uh, it's a hybrid of the two guitars I reviewed <laughs> They they because they make those semi-custom. Then I reviewed a Kiesel guitar, an Aries for a viewer. Now, what happened was I, have uh, you know, obviously I really like the Kiesels I bought. Kiesel sent a bunch of guitars. And the question, uh, one of my viewers bought a Kiesel that was very expensive, right? They were basically on my recommendations of me liking my Kiesels. They, they spent an insane amount of money on a really top tier Kiesel and had it shipped to their house. They didn't open it. They literally just then shipped it unopened straight to me, had me do the unboxing and the review and the idea that did, is he going to get the same thing I got? And, uh, in that particular case he did. So that was really cool. Um, again, that I always say this one review doesn't guarantee all things are good or all things are bad, but it was nice to see that someone who bought a guitar, especially expensive one on a recommendation from me that I liked my guitar, got a fantastic guitar. So that was the whole point of that. And also, uh, I think it sends a message to manufacturers as I've done this over the years when I buy a guitar and also put on the channel. It's like, you know, hey, you may want to make sure that whatever you're sending me is legit because what if I, you know, how would it have looked if the keys I got sent to me was great and the one that the viewer got was bad. Then I did the Beltone uh, B Classic guitar. Now, Beltone is a brand. It's a small brand. They're, they're made here in the U.S. Fantastic guitar. I have to say one of the best playing sounding guitars I've played. It's kind of like a Telly Meets a 59 Les Paul. That one had the 59 Les Paul neck. I wish I had the smaller neck. They make a version with a smaller neck. I can see myself one day being that be one of the guitars I buy. You know, I can't just buy every guitar that comes to the channel. A Sire Larry Carlton H7 guitar. I bought a Sire in 2021, reviewed it on the channel because you guys said Sire was the most amazing thing since, you know, anything and I, I'm missing out. So I bought a Sire, reviewed the Sire. Kyle, the owner of Sire, saw the video, liked the video, reached out and said, can we send you a guitar too? They sent me the Larry Carlton. I love the guitar. The neck, if you read, the, if you watch that video, the specification of the neck is really small. I was not a fan of how small the neck is, but that's because I have big hands. And, uh, you know, that was my only downfall. The quality was fantastic. It was just that specification was off for me. Then I did the Gamma Amp, which is owned by Acoustic, which is a in-house brand of guitar centers. That video I was really excited to do when they reached out to me because I happen to know, talking to the Boss guys, that Boss really has no, is not going to make a 25 watt katana because there's just no way to make it affordable in the price point it needs to be like 100 150 bucks i really think katana would kill if it had a small practice amp i know it has the katana air but i mean just like a little 100 150 dollar amp and obviously gamma is guitar center noticing there's a gap in that market in the store if you're looking for a very affordable hundred dollar esque amp I, that gamma 25 is a very good amp for 100 bucks and that's basically the long and short of that i did the uh, lpd 55 pedal which is like a tweed amp really like it i have a tweed amp it's one of those things where I don't really have a lot of pedals of the amps I already have. So it's not a, a pedal that I would keep because I have that actual amp. <laughs> and so that's basically 
if I didn't have the amp, I would probably have the pedal. I, if I don't have the amp, that's what I'll usually do is I'll have a pedal version of it to get the sound if I want it. I also reviewed the 74 Deluxe by LPD Pedals, and that was a great pedal as well. Really has that Marshall sound, but again, like the 55, I have an amp that sounds like that. So what I decided to do, since I love the 87 Deluxe I reviewed a year ago so much, I bought another 87 non-deluxe model from a store called Pedally in Scottsdale, Arizona. So that way I have one for each one of my boards because I really love the sound of that pedal and I don't have an amp that sounds like that. I did the Ultra Lux Jaguar. That was another the viewer bought that and sent it bought it from Sweetwater had it shipped straight to me I wasn't a big fan of the color but the quality you know the guitar itself is really cool it was nice and again it's just nice to do videos where you know uh, they're not so much like the company is involved. I try to minimize that if I can. But the first ER guitar was so good. Obviously I was like, let's do another one. So I reached out to him and said, hey, let's do a single cut. It actually has a, a little twist in a minute. Then I did the ER headless guitar. Now that my buddy Ralph bought. And that's why I said there's a twist because he was so impressed with the two guitars that I had. A bunch of friends came over for a party. I let them all try their ER guitars. They were all impressed. So uh, Ralph uh, wanted the headless guitar. So we did a review of the headless guitar. So that's why I'm super impressed with that guitar. Then I did the Valiant short scale bass. Now Valiant, of course, this is the guitar company at the beginning of the year. They make the guitars in the Ukraine. We had talked before the war. We're gonna be checking out a limited edition mini bass that's made just for this channel to support a good cause. As you are very aware of, the country of Ukraine was attacked. During one of these attacks, eight missiles were shot at an airport nearby the shop of Valiant Guitars, which destroyed their shop. They've since moved and created a new shop and are shipping guitars and basses again. And before this all happened, we had discussed doing a limited edition run. And what's funny was we were gonna do 10. When I mentioned it to the patrons and said, okay, let's do it, we're gonna do 10. I immediately got 12 orders immediately that that first day. And so we ended up doing a little over 30. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it was like a little over 30. And uh, that was able to help uh, the guys in, in Valiant and help, uh, help, you know, help them make instruments and a totally different instrument. Like I said, 27 inch scale bass was designed to feel like for a guitar player to pick up a bass and feel like they could play bass exactly like on the guitar. Then I did the Kaizen, the Music Man Kaizen. That was a funny video because Sweetwater said, I could do whatever I want, <laughs> go wherever I want, film whatever I want. And so one night after when left Sweetwater, I was roaming around the booths of companies and I took the Kaizen apart and I just took a video and I did a video of the Kaizen. Now to share a little something with you on that video that's kind of funny is when I'm going through the details of the guitar, you can see it's on black shag carpeting and that's because that's the carpet Music Man had at their booth. The next day when I got back to Sweetwater, the guys at Sweetwater stopped me and said, hey, just so you know, security called us at midnight and said you were sitting on the floor taking apart guitars uh, and filming them. And I said, oh, is that a problem? And they said, we told security to leave you alone. So hope you had a good time. That's how I did that video. <laughs> So I did that video. They told me later, that's the prototype. If you want to learn about that guitar, you should watch that video. Then I did the, I took a guitar to the desert. That was the Journey Foldable Acoustic. I was going to uh, Moab in Utah. It was 108 degrees. That was so brutal there, so hot. So, you know, that guitar spent days in the truck. <laughs> in the tr I don't know how hot the truck is, but it was 108, 110 outside. And uh, that guitar took all the abuse and was absolutely fine. I did the checking out the Joyo DC-15S. I actually was so impressed with that amp, I actually ended up keeping it and I put it down in the shop and that's the amp I use now in the shop uh, to test guitars. So that's the amp I'm using now. So, cause it takes a lot of abuse. It's not super expensive and has a lot of features and I can use the Bluetooth to listen to music and plug into it. So very cool. I did the uh, Pictronics Glomer pedal. I'm going ahead and engage it now. <laughs> That's a really unique, interesting pedal. I was at first when I did that video, I remember being so scared when I got it and opened the box, plugged in into it and went, oh my God, what did I get into? I, I said, like I said, I want to do more pedal videos. And then I was like, I don't know what this is. And then over time I fell in love with it. Absolutely love it. Uh, great pedal. Fantastic. Then I did a video, Music Man JP157 string. That's behind me. You can see it right there. Uh, and that was because I interviewed John Petrucci and I did this, let's shop for a guitar together. You see that? I can. So oh, here's, beautiful. there's this one. That was one of the guitars we picked out. <laughs> it was kind of cool. I was like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm looking at a Music Man JP or, or Majesty, I wasn't sure. And he went over all the things that he likes about each one. And I told him what I like and what I don't like. And Basically, it was kind of cool to watch, uh, to have John Petrucci himself explain to you why he made the decisions he did and also 
uh, go, yeah, I think this is probably the guitar you like. And now I, now I have a JP-15. Uh, then a big video I did was the Amplified Nation, the Dumble, the Overdrive Reverb Amp. That was a, a game-changing amplifier for me. The story goes like this. I was at the Sweetwater event. There was a bunch of YouTube channels. There was like 30 there. And one night I was talking to a channel, um, Rhett Shaw, who has a channel. And it was at the end of the event. There's a bunch of us. So just understand that it's just like not specific anything. I'm just standing with a group of people and there he is. And we're talking. And I just casually said like, hey, what's your favorite gear right now? What are you into? What are you playing? What do you like? And he says, oh, I love my Amplified Nation amp. He goes, that's my main amp. And I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, I never heard of the brand. And then just so happened, shortly after that, somebody from Amplified Nation reached out to me and I saw the email. I go, that's that brand that Rhett was talking about. And they said, we'd like to send you an amp. They sent me the amp. I knew it was a Dumble clone. I played one once. You know, I kind of get the idea. It's a $100,000 amp. And um, and that really sent me down a rabbit hole. I've now played a bunch of Amplified Nation amps. I've really, I've actually played a second Dumble. Um, and uh, just a lot coming on the channel that is going to surprise you when it comes to that amp. But fantastic amp. Uh, a lot of you told me that amp was one of the best sounding amps you ever heard on this channel. I have to agree. There's something magic about that amp. And I'll have more to say about that soon. Then I did the 88M Neve interface. And I said it in the video, I'll say it again. You can get the UA interfaces that are a fraction of the price that I think are almost as good. But the Neve 88M has changed, uh, it's changed my life as a musician. I mean, that's like, think all the gears I'm talking about right now. And I'm using the word changed life. It's really expensive. It's something I don't know if I would normally gravitate towards it. And what's funny is there's a couple of people saying how ridiculous the price is. It is in the concept of it's a lot of money, but also in the grand scheme of guitars and stuff and the stuff I own, it wasn't that far off from the other stuff I own. I just, I just really, what it is is the interface is a recognition in me to say, well, maybe not another guitar. Maybe I can just expand other pieces of gear that, that are, are better. And that's the piece of gear I wanted to go for. The AIO Wolf guitar. AIO and Wolf is a brand of guitars. Uh, like a lot of the brands you see on YouTube, they reached out, said, can we send you a guitar, do a video? I did the video. It had a lot of issues, which I talked about. And some of you guys loved it and bought that guitar. And some of you guys said the issues were unacceptable. And uh, that's what I like to hear the most is that, you know, I, I don't really like it when people say like, oh, because of you, I just bought this. I'm like, well, that's not what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you the gear. I'm really just trying to, show you some stuff. So hopefully if you can't put your hands on it, or if you put your hands on it and you're looking for some other thoughts, maybe this will help you. Ola Strandberg reached out and specifically asked that, Hey, can we get a video, a deep dive video? He wanted me to do a detailed deep dive video of the guitar. <laughs> And I was so excited about the guitar when I got it and, and, and checked it out and did the deep dive. I asked him if he'd do the podcast. We did the podcast as well. I noticed you started putting Sir pickups in your guitars. John Sir himself has said that he, he wouldn't have a company if Fender had their act together. Uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's made his living off perfecting other people's designs. He, he, he doesn't necessarily, I mean, he, he'll analyze what works and what doesn't work. You know, at first I was a little afraid that I would like, that's the only guitar I'll play now because it's unique and it feels really good. And and if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. And I really liked it. But I really kind of feel like I, there's sometimes I'm in the mood to play it. And then there's sometimes I'm not. The Paul Reed Smith S2 2408 guitar. Man, I really like that guitar. That was one of the guitars that I played and put a lot of doubt in my head about. I like S2s, but do I, you know, and I like cores, but do you really even need cores anymore? And uh, so what ended up having that is I have a video coming of what I ended up buying because of that guitar. So I have another PRS that I bought and I'll share with you. I kind of hate to tease that to you, but it doesn't make sense to tell you about it right now. But just say, I'll explain that video why that guitar led me to buy this guitar. Uh, then I did the Bad Cat Black Cat amp. If I could only have one amp, it would be my Bad Cat. Sure, I have no 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 second guesses in my head because uh, anything after that it would be an amp and a pedal. I would need an amp and a pedal to be happy. The bad cat, I don't need anything. So that's where I stand on the bad cat. 
And then I did an Ibanez Geo, and that was really cool because I bought that guitar with the money I made from selling some pedals that company sent to me and uh, was able to make another video and get another video on the channel. And that will be a Sharp by My Axe video. Uh, in other words, I'll be upgrading it and we'll figure out what to do with it then. Probably gonna upgrade it and then put it on Reverb for sale, uh, you know, at a very reasonable price. In other words, just, you know, something reasonable uh, what the market would demand for that guitar and then cycle that money back into another video. Okay, that was my year in review. I hope that uh, give you guys some insight on that stuff. Sometimes I've done these over the years where I give an award, so my favorite product. I would definitely say my favorite amp of the year would be the Bad Cat, runner up being the Amplified Nation amp, that's for sure. My favorite pedal would be the Servo, that's for sure, and the runner up would be the Glomer by Pigtronics, as it was one of the most unique pedals I've demoed and reviewed on the channel. My favorite guitar would be the Kiesel Delos, and then the runner up would be probably the Bell Tone. Those seem like they stick out in my mind as interesting things that I really enjoyed. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. That's my assessment of all my gear and review. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for your time. Until the next time, know your gear. <laughs>